So here in a new episode of Chord Play, this is the chords of Jeff Buckley, and I've had some requests to feature some of Jeff's music. And Jeff is the late great son of the late great folk avant-garde, you know, artist from the 60s, Tim Buckley. And Jeff's reign, you know, in music was in the 90s, and technically he died tragically in 1997. Um, and he only released one album in his lifetime, the album Grace from 1994, and that's a brilliant album. Highly respected, you know, acclaimed. Um, you know, I mean, it's definitely a legendary album, and Jeff's a legendary, you know, singer and songwriter and guitarist, and, you know, brilliant musician, for sure. And in today's world, I mean, there's still definitely a big cult following for Jeff and his music, but the average person on the street may not even know his name or his music, but you've probably heard his cover of Leonard Cohen's, you know, Hallelujah, which is very popular. That was in the movie Shrek, I think, but, um... Definitely, Grace is loaded with great songs, great guitar work, great chord work, and there's some great stuff hiding in this lesson, so here we go. So if you've heard Jeff's album Grace from 94, then you know what I'm talking about, but if you've never heard that album before, and you're kind of scratching your head like, who's Jeff Buckley? You know, don't take my word for it. Check out this image and take their word for it. There's quotes here from Jimmy Page, David Bowie, and Bob Dylan. So in the guitar department, we definitely have Jeff Buckley himself. He was a great guitarist, full of all these lush chords and interesting progressions and really kind of outside-the-box ideas. And then he also collaborated uh, with Michael Teague and Gary Lucas on a few songs, and we're actually going to hit those songs, or at least parts of those songs in this lesson. But there's an image so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like and in the songs they kind of co-wrote with Jeff. There's so many connections and things surrounding Jeff Buckley. And, you know, his early years before he, you know, recorded Grace and everything, he was a Musicians Institute graduate. And actually, back then, it was GIT. And he actually went to school with Jimmy Herring. I think they were friends. And then Paul Gilbert was actually one of his instructors. But here's an image kind of showing some of that history with Jeff and GIT, Paul Gilbert, and Jimmy Herring. So the music and the chord-based examples in this episode came from Jeff's 1994 album, Grace, and I was tempted to dive into the various compilations and live albums they've released, you know, since he passed away, but there's so much great guitar work on Grace, it was really hard to leave that album. And that album actually has, like, some capo, you know, action, there's some different tunings, like open tunings, and I did put the tuning notice at the beginning of this episode. This episode's going to be in standard tuning, and also drop D, so we're not going to do any of the capo action, and we're also not going to do any of that open tuning. There's like a track with you know a lot of slide in open tuning. We're not even going to go there. We're just going to stay in standard and drop D. So here we go. The opening, that's the song So Real from the album Grace. And that's definitely one of my favorites. If you made me decide, you know, what's my favorite Jeff Buckley song, I would probably pick that one. That one's definitely up there. I have several favorites, though. Great song, great guitar work, too. Something like this. <laughs> kind of implied partial chord action. It's really weird and interesting, but he's doing this. Like that. You're kind of sliding this F sharp into that A with the open D. And then reach up and grab that C with the open D right there. So we're kind of playing with D or D7, but we're doing it like that. Right? Single F, 
and then play that F again with the open A, and then go to E, like that, so it's really weird. Right? You're gonna move from that F to E down to D, and then turn that into a power chord, it's like a D over A right there. And then, you're gonna basically grab this B flat with that A, like an implied, like B flat major 7, and then move that A up to B flat. to A, and then you're going to bar the 12th fret on the, uh, what, A, D, and G strings right there, and then hammer on from that G to A, so that's really involved, even though it's just kind of this moving, kind of meandering guitar, uh, guitar part, but it's really cool. actual chord that's like an F6 kind of implied like that you're kind of doing this E to F and then slide that F root note grab the low E open and then you're gonna grab this there's an E and a B flat so that's an implied E diminished right there let that low E ring and just play that implied you know E diminished and then move that B flat to B and that's just E minor right there implied had this. this um you know diminish to that minor action then there's a d6 right there you know the open d string that b on uh, this f sharp and that b up there so a d6 and then move over a set of strings like that and that's going to be an a6 so i like that kind of next door action right there move over here you're gonna move down to this g5 and you're doing this move all the way up to the C, you know, something like that, so this G5, that's actually a C5 right there, and then the last chord, when you move that back a half step, that's a B flat 6 implied, like that, so it's all the same shape, that G shape, and then you're kind of moving that up to C, and then finally on that uh, B flat 6. And then do all that again. Start with the uh, E diminished. So if you haven't heard So Real before, check that song out. It's loaded with great lush chords like that. Next up is the song Lilac Wine, and this is actually just this ringing kind of chord workout like this. song and um, that's just supporting the vocal part but it starts with this you know, G minor right there just let it ring like that and then you're moving over here to this E flat major like that just think of C major like that but we're moved up and then we're you know kind of barring back here to grab that so E flat major right there so G minor E flat major and then you're gonna move to D7 right here counts on that and then an A minor 7 flat 5 right there and then back to that G or D7 and then end on G minor and then you basically start with that G minor again and then E flat and then go right to the A minor 7 flat 5 here with that ring and then D7 and then 
end on G minor. It's kind of a basic, you know, bar chord workout, but I love working on stuff like that. It's really beneficial, strength building, and it kind of helps you learn, you know, some different shapes or new chords too. Next up is the opening track from Grace. This is the song Mojo Pen, and we're in drop D tuning. And this is a pretty basic example, but it is revealing some of these chord extensions and lush chords, you know, hiding in Jeff Buckley's music. It's really cool, like this. <laughs> basically a C6 or an implied C13, but we're grabbing you know, that C octave and the G up there on the high E string and also that A note on the G string right there. And that's your sixth. We're doing this. And I'm kind of doing like a hybrid picking thing. I'm picking the bass note with my pick and then using my fingers to finger pick the rest of the notes like that. I'm also moving that pick, I guess, over to the G string. I didn't realize that. Like that. Actually just use your pick for the whole thing or you could finger pick it too but then that's gonna move to an A minor right there and right there you're grabbing that A minor with the, the high E open now and you're gonna grab this D note and you're gonna pull that off back to that C like that and then back to that C6 as the intro it's also the verse and then at the end of that pattern it just keeps repeating and then he starts singing and after that pattern you're actually going to stop on the, the c6 and then you want to basically uh, play this giant d5 power chord and keep in mind we're in drop d and you're going to basically rake or strum backwards like that let that ring and then it keeps going. You know, really interesting song and I love the way it just kind of slowly kind of fades in and kind of slowly develops and then there's a song there. Next up is the bridge section from the song Lover You Should Have Come Over and we're back in standard tuning now and I'm not gonna lie, this is very advanced, it's really hard to play, but it's so cool I had to include this, but get ready, you're gonna have your hands full like this. <laughs> starting right here and there's this really interesting kind of rhythm and that's a D over F sharp right here and you're moving up to this and that's going to be a G minor 6 implied so that D over F sharp which we're kind of doing it like that you can also do it with your thumb too but I kind of prefer doing it this way G minor 6, really you're just fretting the 3rd fret low E, 3rd uh, fret on the G, and 3rd fret on the B. Also the D and the high E are open. So there's that G minor 6 implied. And then uh, right there an A add 9. And then move up here, just grab this B note and play the D, G, B, and high E strings open. And that's an implied G6 over B. So that's the 9th fret low E, 7th fret D, 9th fret on the G, B and high E are open, and that's an A add 9 over C sharp. And this is super crafty. So now you're moving over here and grabbing that B note, and then you're grabbing the C right there. Don't play the, the A string, but then uh, the B and the high E are open, and that's basically C major 7 right there. That's a really cool change, you know, that uh, A add 9 over C sharp. Or seven and then you're moving back here it's like an implied what a B minor add 11 and then you're back to that uh, a add 9 over C sharp and then just for a second that G6 over B and then that a add 9 and then I'm hearing 
just a single F sharp. I think it could be a, an F sharp power chord, maybe. And then I'm just moving to E minor right there. And then at the end, you hear Jeff play an E minor 9. Just add that F sharp on the top. Like that. Like I said, that's very involved and very complicated, but it's so cool, like this. Next up is the intro to the song Grace, and we're back in drop D tuning for this. And this idea is based around some really basic chords, but it's totally a pinky finger workout. You're going to be working your pinky finger over time, and that ends up making this really hard to play. But it's something like this. <laughs> around uh, F minor, G minor, and E minor. And we're gonna grab F minor right here. And as you can see, uh, your pinky is just going to town over here. So strum an F minor chord, and then you're gonna pull off from this D to C there on the B string. And you're also gonna grab this B flat to A flat there on the G, like that, to do. And that's the first little pattern. Just pick through the chord. Do that first pull off on the B. And then you're going to do that pull off on the G string uh, three times. Like that. So it's just all pinky right there. And that's really hard to do. It's definitely going to shape up your pinky finger and give it some you know, added strength and, and dexterity. So after that first pass right there. You're going to do it again. The pull off on the B, then the high E, then the B, and then the G. Like that. And then do the exact same thing in G minor right here. You can see we're picking through the chord. And the pull off on the B right there from E to D now. And then you're going to basically stat uh, or pull off that. Uh, C to B flat three times, and then go back to that picking through the uh, G minor chord, and then you're going to do that same thing, that pull off from uh, E to D on the B string, like that, and then this A to G, and then that uh, E to D again, and then the uh, C to B flat, like that. I said it's a great workout for your pinky finger and then just end on this strummed you know E minor chord and you can kind of do that sneak it with just one finger like that last but not least is the pre-chorus section from the same song grace and we're still in drop D tuning and once again this is so unusual and difficult and complicated I wanted to include this in this lesson because it's really cool it's also really hard to play but something like this So, uh, you know, think of E minor, but we're in drop D, so we need to add that second fret on the low E. And there's your first chord, E minor. And then you're going to move up to this, and that's basically an F sharp diminished implied. And that's really unusual to go from here to here, right? And you're going to basically move up here, and that's a G6. So it's kind of similar to what we had for the F sharp diminished, but that note on the G string is up a fret. So there's the F sharp diminished. Go up here, there's G6. And we're strumming these chords. I'm just kind of walking through the progression. Move that up a whole step. There's A6 right there. And we're, you know, once again, remember we're in drop D. So now we're doing this, and that's basically B minor right there. You know, think of a B minor bar chord, but we're in drop D and we're not using the A string. this and that's an a six nine right there you know that open a string 
string, this B note, C sharp, and F sharp right there. So once again, we're just gonna walk through those really slow. E minor, F sharp diminished, G6, uh, A6, B minor, and then an A6-9. And then that progression or cycle ends on E minor right there again. So uh, then you start strumming it like this. song and I love that guitar part it's so cool all right that's gonna wrap this episode of chord play with the chords of Jeff Buckley definitely a very respected and talented you know he was a brilliant musician and he was really young too he was only 30 years old when he died and I guess I didn't share that story earlier but he was actually in Memphis Tennessee recording his second album and then late one night I think it was after midnight he was fully dressed and he dove into the Mississippi River you know for a midnight swim and they're not really sure exactly what happened, but they speculate maybe a tugboat came along. He got caught up in the undercurrent and he drowned. And then they didn't find his body until like five or six days later. I mean, it's so tragic and so sad. And you can't help but wonder that untapped, unrealized potential that he had. Because Grace was a brilliant album. And I have a hunch that Jeff would have just kept slinging out, you know, great albums after that. And it's kind of similar to other rock and roll tragedies, you know, like Jimi Hendrix or Randy Rhodes or somebody like that. But with those players, we actually have a lot more music than we have from Jeff, because he really only had one album. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.